Today we're actually gonna be cooking Yu-Gi-Oh! Everybody's always saying they're cooking up the goo. Well, today we're in the actual kitchen cooking a new fusion deck that I haven't released to the public yet. And it's a, it's a dream of mine, to be honest, because this deck is everything that a fusion lover really wants to eat up, you know? So what makes a good fusion deck, right? Obviously, the best fusion deck ever made, Tier Laments. Second, probably the second best ever fusion deck, Branded. And then the third one, which is Shadal's. I don't know if there's anything in between. Like, these are probably the most iconic three best fusion decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. And this is what I've cooked up today. This is what I'm combining. If you want more cooking shows like this, make sure to leave it in the comments right below. Let's get started because we have a lot of work to do today. A quick reminder that my new branded sleeves are coming exclusively to Sleeve Chief on Sunday, September 22nd. These new and exclusive branded theme sleeves feature a brand new look of Blazing Cartesia and a Luber. So September 22nd at 8 p.m. CET or 2 p.m. Eastern, only on sleevechief.de. And hey, we get an extra 5% off using code GALZO5. So first of all, right, you gotta have the boy, the ultimate boy. You know who it is, it's Fallen Valmaz. This is what makes the deck tick. You need three of this because we're of course playing 60 cards. This is a pretty fat pile right here. So we are playing three Albas, of course. And the, the reason why is that you want to hit this in your graveyard mills. You want to be able to get access to Albas in the graveyard. So it's pretty straightforward. Basically what we do with Brandon, everything for the next couple minutes is gonna look pretty standard to you, right? Um, two Luber, just two, we wanna minimize our normal summons even though we're at, we are at 60 right we don't want to draw too many normal summons because we are also playing the tier elements card but of course we're playing three cartesia and this is good because it works with the tier cards and with the branded cards right this is just poly on legs with so many other additional effects and this is why it's so good we got the one quam again based on what we said about the normal summons we don't want to maximize too much on them right because you don't want to be opening god forbid more than one like you need to be opening one and that's pretty much it and a stellar because this is going to be your bridge to the rest of the girls like if you don't have like this is obviously sendable from branded fusion you send this with branded fusion if you have a cost for lubelion that is a spell right then you're going to be able to summon the stellar from the grave and this one is going to be able to send you another spell or trap to summon one of the girls, either Cartesia or Quem. And then for a few one-offs, you know, the supplementary engine, one tragedy, one Mercurier, one kit, because we need that brand infusion back. And surprisingly, one Albion. This is not a pure branded build, right? So we don't need to be maximizing specifically on Albion because we do have a lot of bestials. And then finally, we're obviously playing the Deer Servant, so we are going to be playing Dogmatica Maximus, which is just super crucial in this deck. It's such an advantage card, to be honest. So these are a little bit of, uh, of monsters, just like the generic, normal, branded supplements. And then we're playing a lot of Bestials. We're playing three Serenir, and we're playing two Druze, playing one Magnemite, and one Bestial Lubalion. Obviously, these cards are incredible in today's metagame. Fiendsmith, you bell, you want to be gaining access to these. And more importantly, Branded in High Spirits is a deck that can really, really run this deck super successfully. So, you know, this is why we played so many dragons. And then for the tier engine, we're playing just one of each girl because they're limited. Shearing is incredible. Merly is a normal summon. This is why we've cut down on the amount of normal summons. And Happiness, of course, such a good card. And then you might be surprised, but King of the Swamp. So, so good in this deck. This is obviously a substitute for Kit Kalos, but this grabs Polymerization. And this can substitute Fallen Valpas. So if you don't have access to it, this immediately gets you access to it. And it can also be Cartesian. So this card is super versatile in this deck, to be honest. All right, let's clear up some room here on the cooking board. We need this clean. 
because we have a couple more engines in our mids. We have the last monster in the deck, which is Shadal Beast, draws a card, and we are going to be playing Apcolone and Winda in this deck because it works so well with the tier cards, works so well with Grass, works really well, of course, with Shadal Schism, which you can send Apcolone with Brangnil to grab it from the deck. So, so good. The singular copy of Branded Fusion. Just makes me super sad when I see this every single time. Um, we're playing three opening. We don't play anything other than fusions in the deck, so we don't care about being locked. And three deployment. Um, this card is incredible. And you already know that, so no reason for me to mention it again. Three thrust. Just a solid board breaker because it can grab you polymerization, which can threaten Guardian Chimera. Obviously, Brandon and White, Grass, Branded Fusion. This card does really, really well in this fusion pile. And then, something that I haven't been playing in a while, which is Super Polymerization. We are playing the Loving Defender Forever, a target for Ubel, because Ubel is just the best deck. And against Tenpai, which I consider as the second best deck, and also Snake Eyes, this becomes live with Garuru. So we don't have to play Mud Dragon, just like as an additional clog in the extra deck, but this one takes care of Ubel, this one makes Garura out of two Fire Dragons, and out of two Fire Pyros. So this card is really good. And then of course you saw the Maximus already, Nadir Servant, incredible, can send Apcolone, can send Lulu, which we are playing in this deck, just like super versatile and good. And then High Spirits. Now High Spirits is unique, you might have... You might actually remember this from back in the day. So let me just explain what I mean and what you might need to remember. So let's say I have a Merlin in hand and High Spirits. Now, if you remember, people used to play this with the 3DS Frog because you can dump it, then make like a Dragos Topelli or something like that. Because this one, what Brandon High Spirits says is that you need to discard a monster from your hand and then another monster from the extra deck with the same type, 2500 defense or attack, right? So now, thankfully, and this is a relatively new thing, we have Rule Kalos, obviously, as of uh, Darkwing Blast, and Rule Kalos is the same type as all the Tier Elements monsters, it's an Aqua, but it also has 2500 attack, which means you activate high spirits, you send the Merly from your hand or any Aqua, Dark, obviously, the Sheeran and the Havnus. You send them both to the graveyard, then you get to add whatever you want from the branded engine, Cartesia, Quen, whatever you need. Activate Merly, shuffle back these two into a Dragos Topelia. So this plus a tier is a search and a Dragos Topelia on top of it. It's just really, really, really solid. And um, yeah. Now to gain some access to some one ups we have one Pearl Rhino, one Talents, one in white, one regained, I decided not to play Lost just because it's a little bit too finicky. Sometimes you want to fuse a little bit differently, sometimes you don't want to send Lubellion, but you have a lot of bestials and this will provide you with a lot of advantage. One in red, one normal polymerization, searchable, of course, by King of the Swamp. And then one Foolish Burial, and of course, the grass. That grass looks greener. Incredible if you manage to resolve it in this deck. Then for the traps, one Black Oat Laughs, Mill deck, tons of discards in this deck, and one Shadal Schism, of course, one Retribution, and one Fusion Duplication. This is the main deck, 60 cards. I usually screw up the, the counting of the, of the deck, so correct me in the comments. So we already saw Rukalos, incredible. Guardian Chimera, super important in this deck, because King of the Swamp is essentially a board breaker going second. That's what it is. Think about it like that, it's actually kind of incredible. We are playing the one Lulu, because Nadir Servant is really good with Lulu. Like if you're playing Nadir Servant, don't bother not playing Lulu, because this one gets you the Quimor Cartesia you're missing on your end board during the end phase. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't play Lulu, right, in general. Wind and Aplone, just the engine, right, making this on your opponent's turn. Grenignol, sending Aplone, which grabs you the Schism, which turns into a window on your opponent's turn. GG's, right? Garura for the Super Poly, and also a really, really good send if you already have access to your spellcasters. You send this for 
Um, it's a little bit better than Lulu actually because you're gonna have to banish something for the Maximus, right? So drawing one card, then banishing it, it's kind of free. And then loving Defender Forever to deal with the Ubel boards. Really looking forward to resolve this someday. Um, Titanic Lad for the Quems, Lubelion for the Shufflebacks, Furious just because it's still an incredible, incredible card. You make this with two dragons, we have a lot of Mistials obviously. And then one Mirror Jade and one Albion. Because this is not a pure branded deck. You can only play one of each, and it is what it is. And then one Grand Guignol. Again, I would play two, but uh, it's a little bit tighter in this deck specifically. We have one Queridus, just because it's a really, really good fusion target, really good floater, and of course, Trago Sepelio. Incredible. Let's do a test hand, see how this deck is cooking, see if we can actually run a combo here. So while I pile shuffle, you can see this beautiful playmat on the table right here. It is, of course, a Sleeve Chief playmat and this beautiful deck box, which I'm not sure if it's in focus or not. And uh, yeah, if you like this series, I mean, I'm trying to make deck profiles a little bit more interesting, right? Um, we could do a little bit more like live cooking where I build the deck from scratch and figure out everything. I actually have here all of my like bulk cards and sleeves and stuff. So in case we need to cook it up on the spot, we can definitely do that. And it's fun. We have like a nice island in the kitchen here. And, you know, just making deck profiles interesting because I know they're not anymore. And hopefully we'll get the sound quality right, you know. Just want to see how the series does in general. So if you want to see this continue, there's only one way to actually make it work. All right, shuffling up and drawing five. Well, it's kind of a poor hand, but we did draw grass, right? We have grass Cartesia, and it, it's kind of bad, like if, especially if grass gets ash, right? But let's see what we can do if we actually hit with grass. We just need one monster to kind of like unclog the hand here, and um, let's assume we're milling 20 as usual. Aluber, thrust, deployment, Quam, that's five. That's another five, that's 10 total. We already have a tier name and we have Serenir and Albion, so it's gonna go crazy. Three more. King of the Swamp, insane. Druze and in red, okay? Swear to God, I didn't plan to draw grass, didn't stack it up, you saw me shuffling. But now we have triggers and this is really important. So we have Havanus, Serenir, which can trigger here. And I think those are it, right? And we have King of the Swamp. So we're going to be able to access Branded Fusion. And we also have a way to access Rukala. So we're going to do Chain 1, Chain 2, right? Serenir is going to dump the Retribution here. I'm going to put the Graveyard on the screen. And Havanus and King of the Swamp are just going to go ahead and fuse for, you know, already Abyssal Negate. Rural Kalos. This is our hand. And this is our graveyard. Now, we will, before we activate the Albion here, we definitely want to special summon the Cartesia, right? Because this is Alba's in the grave, we don't have another one, right? As far as I'm concerned. Yeah, so we have to do this before we activate this because otherwise this is gone and we can't special summon the Cartesia. It doesn't really matter because we're probably not gonna normal summon, but we could. So special summon the Cartesia on the field, Albion will activate and dump us a copy of Brighton Infusion, of course. There we go. And put itself back into the bottom, you don't draw a card. Retribution grabs this to the hand, and we have such quality discards here that I really want to go for, I kind of want to go for like an immediate Lubellion here, just so I can get a discard, but we don't have to. We definitely don't have to. We're going to activate Brand Fusion here. I think the right thing to do in this scenario, just go Albaz and Lubellion. It's like the normal line, because we have a lot of Banish still in the grave. Summon the Albion here. Activate Albion, Banish Albaz, and any Dark. Doesn't matter at all. We can do these two. 
banish them for Lubellion. Then Lubellion discards Blackout, right? And shuffles back to make the MJ. There we go. Now we probably zone it like this. We tribute the Albion for the Lubellion here. And we will activate Lubellion to place Branded Regain, which will draw us a card a little bit later. Now we activate Cartesia, fuse these two away for Granguignon. Now, basically, this is where you need to decide which line you're going to go into. If we want to be a little bit more unique, right, then we activate Granguignol here and we send Apcolon, right? You send Apcolon if you want, um, of course, to get a copy of Schism. If not, you can send Titanica and get a Quem. Basically the same thing. But we want to go a little bit special. Activate the effect here. It's also going to allow us to draw with uh, Regained for the next turn. So we have a discard for Super Poly. Super Poly. So we activate that and we go ahead and grab ourselves a copy of our Schism. And then discard the Polymerization. Set two. Go to the end phase in which we will activate our Cartesia where we're going to activate our Albion and let's see if we have high spirits here could be good we do have the branded in red in the grave which is a little bit unfortunate but we have a Cartesia back to our hand Albion let's see what we want to do we could theoretically um if we grab let's see what we have here right Maybe we have like a nice trap or something. No. So we could go a little bit greedy here and go for opening, which we can already activate discarding the Cartesia that we just added back to hand and get a Quem onto the field. We only have one. Do we hit the Quem? Oh, we must have milled it, though. Did we? I didn't see it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it's here. So we're, pro we're just not going to go for the branded opening at this stage. We still have a Cartesia in hand. We could go for... Um, we could just go for High Spirits. Um, that will just give us a, back a card to our hand. Not the most optimal, because we did milk Quem. But this is going to be your end board, right? And during your opponent's turn, of course, especially if they have like a dark monster, that's incredible to do that. You banish the Apcolon and you will banish here, I think. Albion is good to banish here because we'll shovel it back to get a wind on board, which is always great. Send a dark monster and then regain, put back the Albion and draw us another card. So yeah, this is the deck. Um, I think in terms of like experimentally, it's obviously really, really cool. You have a lot of lines here if you like tier limits, but still like getting locked into fusions. This might be the deck for you. I really want to hear your comments below on this type of deck profile presentation. I've had a blast doing this. Thank you so much for being here and watching. And uh, hopefully I'll see you again soon. Peace.